This is Tim Weir with a video clip from SemiHomemadeTools.com. Right, so I finished the drilling and tapping of all the parts. And next thing we want to do is a little bit of cleanup. And there's, there's several things you want. Number one, I'm, I'm, I'm taking off all the markings that I have on the pieces. And uh, if we're done with that now. We've already got everything tapped and drilled to the correct sizes. We can get rid of all of our blue marks. Some of the aluminum comes and it has some factory markings on it as well. Those come right off. Now, at this point, I suppose if you really wanted to, you could uh, start assembling. Personally, I, I want to build a machine that I am really, really proud of. Not only because it works really well, but because it looks good. I, wa I want people who see it to marvel just a little bit, saying, My heavens, how in the world did you ever do that? Because it looks so good. And so there's a couple more steps to clean up that... I personally think are important and uh, everyone gets to choose how they want to do it. There's a couple of steps. First one is what we call deburring. Now deburring, when you, whenever you do um, a drilling operation or a, um, a tapping operation, you end up with just a little bit of a rough edge along here where, where you did your work. And even from the machining, sometimes there's just a little bit of a, a, a little bit of a rough edge around. And so I like to clean those up. And for that I use what's called a deburring tool. And there's a couple of different tips that come with these. One is for um, steel and, and iron and so on. And one is for aluminum. Uh, and so I've got the one in here for aluminum. And for long straight edges, it's really pretty easy. You just put the little bead up there over the edge and draw it to you. And you may see some small shavings coming off and that's what you want because that's just going to take off that little bit of corner. Nothing else may save you a few scratches. I got a, I got a few while I was doing the drilling and tapping. So it's worth it to take the time and just go over all the square edges real quick. Now I'm not going to do all of these on camera, but I will be doing every one of them before we go on to the next. That's the way you do the outer edges. Holes also have a little bit of rough, and in fact, if you run your finger over it, you can feel it just a little bit there. And that's what you put the bead down in the hole, and you go vertically, and just go around like that. Now you can possibly see on the camera, I can sure see it and I can definitely feel it. There is no rough edge on that whatsoever. And like I said, it only takes a couple of seconds on each one. And I'm even going to do it where we have the tapped holes. The reason we do it there, it just makes it a little bit easier for you to start the screw because it doesn't have a rough edge on it to catch. Yeah, there we go. I'm going to do the same thing on the back side or the front side. If we start on the back, these parts are universal. They're going to, they're going to work in any one of the four positions in, in, in case of this one, which is uh, one of the legs. And 
and that's it. Now some people will go ahead and use this just the way it is. You can put it in, um, put your machine together, and you're going to have a very nice looking machine. You may recall from another video I talked about what it does when you uh, spend just a few minutes on the buffer. Here is a part that um, is pretty much straight out of, out of the machine except for having drilled and, and tapped a, few, a couple of holes in the back and then that, that one get the back side as well takes just a little bit of practice to get the right angle on this but once you do you're going to find it is so easy and so fast that it's well worth the time. Now, like I said, you could put that together right now just the way it is. Or you can spend a few minutes on the buffing machine, on the buffing wheel, and get a part that looks like that. And this is all got fingerprints and a little bit of uh, aluminum dust and stuff because I'm handling it with my hands after doing the aluminum. But I think you'll see that there is a huge difference and this is something that I personally can be really proud of to put that on machine and have people see it that way. So we will go on in the next part of this and show you exactly how to use the buffer. This video is presented by Semi Homemade Tools, where we help you create and build tools to fall in love with. If you enjoyed it or found it useful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do so now. We welcome you to visit us and find lots of other free information at semihomemadetools.com.